Hello and welcome to another video. In today's video, we're going to be replacing the lights in our Bolands HT23. As you can see, it's on the essential to buy list. And we have them today to fit. But we're also going to be showing you um, how to source LED lights for any garden tractor, compact tractor or full size tractor. That has four and a half inch diameter halogen lights. So two years ago now, we actually did a video on doing this LED light upgrade on our Bolands HT20, but we provided little details on them then, except for how well they worked compared to the original. The main reason for not giving much detail was because we were trying to find a reliable UK supplier for them, but that hasn't really given... We haven't really been very successful in that, but we'll be hoping to give you more details today. But if you want to watch that video, then uh, the link will be up on the top right of your screen, hopefully. And um, if you haven't seen it, I'd recommend going to see it for like for seeing context of this video, either pausing this video to watch it or like after this video to give a bit more context of what I'm talking about. Now, before we go into detail on the LEDs, uh, we have them on the Bolands HT20 here, which is the upgrade we did a couple of years ago. We're going to be comparing them to the originals on this HT23 here. So, for looks, you're going to get a close-up here of the LEDs and how like all the surround is and everything. Try and memorise that. And now we'll come over to the HT23. You can see the surround and everything. And especially from a distance, there really isn't that much difference visually. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the lights here in the workshop to give a comparison between the two. We'll do the original first and then the LED to show the difference between them. And if you want a better comparison, I'd recommend checking out the previous video because we actually went out at night in pitch black light to actually see the full difference. Anyway, my cameraman will now switch off the light, and as I said, we'll do the originals first. Okay, so there goes the light, and now for the originals. There you go. Now try and remember how much light that is. And now the LEDs. As you can see, there's quite a big difference. Now that you've seen that bit of video, or our previous video, and you've seen the effect that the LED light upgrade has, uh, we're now going to unbox these and show you what they look like straight out of the box. There you go, that's, that's one singular box, obviously there's another one in there. And there's the LED. Now we have both of them out of the box and we've laid them out so you can see the front and back at the same time. But it's time to give you some details on these. And because there's quite a lot of details and I can't remember all of them, I have a couple of sheets worth. So starting off with a quick disclaimer, uh, this information is based on our research. Uh, and you should probably make up your own mind on what you should get, but this is just what we found about these. Anyway, these lights are called PAR 36s, which are four and a half inches diameter across the face. Uh, PAR stands for Parabolic Aluminium Reflector, and the 36 is 36 times by one eighth of an inch, which is four and a half inches. Now, the original halogen lights that are on there, they were sealed beam halogens, normally 50 watt, and had a 300 hour life, and were screw or spade fittings. Um, now, these lights were used for landscaping, tractor or farm machinery, aircraft landing lights, stage lighting, swimming pool or water feature lights, or boat deck lighting. Now the ones on the Bolands, uh, well there was two different kinds, there was G they were made by GE, General Electric, 
um, and they were GE4406, which were screw fittings no longer made, which I believe are these ones that we still have in here in the sealed box. Or the GE4406-1, which were spade fittings. Now for some specs and details on the LED replacements. Now to search for these, you can search on search engines like Google or any other search engine. Or you can go on online shops like eBay or Amazon. And there's a couple of things you can search for for these. You could search for PAR36 LED, that's PAR36 LED. Or you could search up for GE4406 LED to try and find an equivalent to the originals. These are the GE4406s, of course. Now, for these, there's quite a few suppliers over in the US. Uh, there's quite minimum amount of suppliers here in the UK. And the ones that are here, they're for premium price, so they're quite a lot more than in the US. Um, or you can buy them direct from China, where they all seem to be made and then shipped off to these different suppliers. And the price for the ones direct from China is about 10 to 12 pounds here in the in UK currency, which you saw how well they worked on the HT20, even for that lower price. Now these LED replacements have both screw and spade fittings, as you can see on here. They have both, unlike the old General Electric ones that I, that had spade fittings or screw fittings. And then the specification to match the originals is 9 watt LEDs. Of course, they need less um, power from the battery than halogen lights do. And you'd want them in cool white, which is 600k, and that is, of course, the colour that is produced by the LEDs, which is the colour that you saw from the HT20. And then finally, you'd want the ones that have 51 LED chips in, which chips are these little yellow dots here, which are the actual light sources. And then that doesn't make the aesthetic of the light look any worse whereas you can get 18 chip ones where the chips are like circles quite big circles on there and there's 18 of them in there um if you were to get those lights but they do stand out quite a lot and look quite different to the originals now on to fitting the lights we're going to be fitting them on this boland's ht23 which is our other one, not the one we used previously in the video. But for this, we've already taken the hood stay off to allow this to go further down for access to the lights. We've just put something under the hood to hold it up. And we've already started disconnecting the wiring. But before we go any further, I thought I'd just say that uh, we've very carefully bent up these spade connectors because uh, it has a bit of a deeper... Um, back than the other one um so otherwise it'd be in the way um and what we had to do on the ht20 when we when we've used these lights before is just carefully file down the sides of the spade connectors because they were too wide before on the bolands to f keep the light in it has this clip that goes around it you can see it goes the corners go into these two pieces, goes round this fitting notch, which is very similar on the replacement one to the original one, and then it goes in here, and then you just kind of have to like unclip both of those, like so, and then you should be able to get the light out, and then it should be the exact reverse uh, process for putting one in. Both of the lights are in now. Didn't actually take us very long to get them in. And you can see why we had to bend them up a bit, because this connector would have been in the way of the fastening notch. And we did have to take a bit off the side of the spades, which we did with the angle grinder, very carefully to minimise any damage. We didn't do it with the file, because again, we were trying to minimise uh, damage to the electrical components. But now that they're connected up, let's see if they work. Look at that. Now what we'll do is we'll connect up the bonnet again, 
uh, close it and see what it looks like from the outside for real. Now it's actually time to test it since we've got the bonnet up and see how it'll look. Now all I'm going to do is just quickly run and turn the lights off and see how it looks without any light. Good that. Really happy with the upgrade on the HT23. Uh, we gave quite a lot of detail on these lights in this video, so we'll be leaving it on in the YouTube description as well, in a written form. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you can just kind of like scroll down uh, and it'll have all the information there. And if you're watching this on forums uh, then and you want the information, then it's probably easiest to go onto YouTube. Uh, there should be a link to the video as well as the video um, where you can scroll down and see the description. But that's it for this video. Thank you for taking the time to watch my videos. It is appreciated. Um, and feel free to comment. We like responding to comments on YouTube and on forums. And I'll see you on the next one. Bye. Please subscribe to my channel, like this video and see our other videos. More to follow as we do more on this tractor. Bye!